In recent years, wild storms and record-breaking temperatures seem to be all over the world's news. Is this a sign of changing global climate? Almost all of the world's scientists think so. Today we'll be talking to Professor Ove Goldberg to learn why it matters. Professor Goldberg is the director of the Global Change Institute at the University of Queensland in Australia and a coordinating lead author of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change Fifth Assessment Report. Professor, welcome to the program. Good morning. It's uh, really great to be with you. Let's start from the beginning. What is climate change? Well, firstly, climate isn't just your day-to-day -day temperature, rain or clouds. Climate's characterised by long-term and large-scale weather patterns such as the seasonal monsoon of Asia. Uh, importantly, climate is driven by the sun's heat flowing in and out of the Earth's atmosphere. OK, so how, how is the climate changing? Most of our atmosphere lets both sunlight and heat through, uh, passing through it. But certain gases such as carbon dioxide, and you might have heard of something called methane, trap the heat instead. And these gases essentially act like a greenhouse, which is why we call them greenhouse gases. A warm planet doesn't sound so bad. That's a good point. Um, if we didn't have the atmosphere doing this role with the greenhouse gases, the Earth would be 30 degrees Celsius cooler. Really cold. Well, in that case, thank goodness for greenhouse gases. Well, we don't want to be frozen, but we don't also want to be too hot. For the last 150 years or so, we've emitted more and more greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, primarily through the burning of fossil fuels to produce energy. And as a result, the planet is getting warmer and the climate is changing. The 2015 United Nations Paris Agreement, which I think was signed by 180 nations, suggests that we should limit this warming well below 2 degrees Celsius and ideally to 1.5 degrees. But what does a degree or two matter? Well, when we talk about a degree or two, we're actually referring to the global average temperature. In some places, it will be a bit cooler than that. And in other places, such as the Arctic, it may be up to 12 degrees warmer. So it represents a really big change. And we've already seen uh, an average warming of one degree Celsius of the average global temperature since the pre-industrial times. That's before we started to burn all that CO2. Based on the world's current trajectory, we're projected to reach almost four degrees of warming by the end of this century. This warming trend has major implications for the climate patterns that we've always relied upon to grow food, manage our fresh water supplies and plan our cities. If we also factor in projected sea level rise and storms, then humans have quite an expensive and dangerous challenge on their hands. So does climate change explain the heat waves and the hurricanes we've been seeing in the last few years? Well, we've always had extreme events like big storms, but what's happening now is that they're becoming more frequent and they're often becoming more intense because there's more heat and energy involved. Professor, this is all very unsettling. What, what can we do? It's critical that we cut greenhouse gases emissions almost immediately if we want to avoid the worst impacts of climate change. Now, the good news is that we know how to do that. We know how to fix it. Well, what's the problem then? Well, the biggest challenge is the burning of fossil fuels. Now, historically, we've done this to produce power, fuel transport, and ultimately drive the world's economy. At the same time, we've cleared the forests around the world, which have reduced their capacity to absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. I'm not sure I want to give up electricity or stop buying anything made in a factory. Well, if we're smart in the way we mitigate climate change, that's solving it, you won't have to. We just need to switch to low emission technologies, which are available, but which need to be made affordable. Many countries are putting a price on carbon and the other greenhouse gases to take into account the environmental damage caused by fossil fuels. But should fossil fuels be punished for being the cheapest energy source? We shouldn't punish fossil fuels, but we do need to transition away from them pretty much immediately. While cheap in terms of dollars, the climate damage caused by fossil fuels has not been taken into account. If the true cost had been included, fossil fuels would be much more expensive. 
One way to factor in this cost is to introduce a price on carbon intensive technologies. If we do this, we would speed up the transition to clean, renewable energy sources like solar and biofuels. There's been a lot of debate about this. Is carbon pricing the best policy approach to dealing with climate change? Well, that's for the government to decide. But they do have other options, such as putting limits on an organisation's annual greenhouse gas emissions, or, for example, by providing grants and subsidies to incentivise the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. Adaptation will also play an important role in our changing climate. Good point. Certainly some big challenges ahead. Professor, thank you so much for your time. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you. It seems the heat is on and we'll be back shortly.